In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the analog discovery tool with either the flywire assembly or the BNC adapter. Let's take a look at the setup. So here's the analog discovery with the flywire assembly and I have connected channel one to the output of the waveform generator one. And we want to compare this to when we later connect the, the BNC adapter, which on the left side has two uh, BNC connectors for oscilloscope probes and on the right side has two outputs from the waveform generator. And we want to compare the performance of how that works. So here is um, the display that we currently have. I've just been um, making a sine wave at one kilohertz here and only uh, channel one connected. And we're going to switch that now to a rectangular waveform. So I'm going to go to the waveform generator and do a square instead of the sine. And then we're going to take a look at it again. So we can see that we get a fairly nice rectangular waveform. It has a little bit of an overshoot uh, on the rising edge and also an overshoot on the falling edge. Uh, but otherwise it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add uh, the second channel, which I have not connected. So well, let's verify what we have here. So um, we have the, the, in the flywire assembly, we have the orange wires, which are the ones that go to channel one. And then we have the blue wires, which are the ones that go to channel two. So my blue wires, they are actually open right now. And you can see that as I move those wires around, the, the blue channel in, on the oscilloscope is actually uh, changing how much um, of the waveform that I'm picking up. So what we have here is a crosstalk between the wires of the flywire assembly. Okay, I'd like to show you another thing while we have the flywire assembly connected. And that is um, a hundred kilohertz signal. So let's go to the waveform generator and I'm going to change the frequency now to a hundred kilohertz. And then we can look at that with the scope. Okay, and I'm going to switch back to uh, just the, the waveform. And we have to expand things so that we get to see what's actually happening. So we change the time base to five microseconds. Okay, and uh, here we get to see uh, the two rectangular waveforms again. To remind you, the lower one is actually just from crosstalk. We have not connected that channel. And if I move those wires around, it actually makes a change in what that looks like. Now, in order to see what's really happening is um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and make the time base now uh, 500 nanoseconds. Okay, and so now we get to see just the rising edge, uh, which looks pretty fuzzy here at the top. And of course I can switch the trigger to the falling edge and then I get to see a similar thing at the, uh, at the falling edge of the, of the waveform. And uh, this is not desirable to have that. So what we want to do now is we are going to disconnect the, the flywire assembly and then uh, connect the ENC adapter. Okay, so we have the BNC adapter now connected and um, I should show you some of the inputs there. I'm going to connect the, the probes first. So here is a probe and here is a probe. And then we need to actually connect uh, things like the uh, ground and the, the wave the output of the waveform generator. So the ground is fairly straightforward. There is uh, the third pin from the left of the extension from the BNC adapter, that is the ground. It's, it's labeled with a G on the printed circuit board, so you should easily be able to find that. But for the output of the waveform generator, we don't actually have a BNC cable here. What we do is we use the 
the, the jumper here that uh, goes with the right connector and one of those pins is open the other two are covered by the jumper so the one which is open is uh, where we connect uh, our little jumper wire and that actually uh, is the output from the waveform generator okay so now we can go back and we can connect the probes and see uh, that we are actually getting the right thing. I'm going to switch to this display. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the probe for channel 1 and connect it to the output here from the waveform generator. And the, the channel 2 probe I have connected to the BNC assembly but uh, I'm not using that probe right now, that is just open. Okay, and so what we get to see now is that um, we have actually a nice clean uh, falling edge uh, in, in this uh, display. And if I change the trigger to the rising edge, then we get a nice um, rising edge there. So what I want to do next is I want to actually go back to the one kilohertz waveform. So let's change the frequency to one kilohertz. And that of course doesn't change much on, on the rising edge because we are just zoomed in uh, quite a bit. So we're going to go back and make this 500 microseconds for the time base and we get to see the rectangular waveform again and it looks actually quite similar to the one that we had from the flywire assembly. So at low frequencies the flywire assembly uh, works uh, reasonably well. We can see that there is still crosstalk, the, there is the lower uh, curve here and uh, I'll move to the other display here so that you get to see when I'm moving around my probe. So moving around the probe now has pretty much no effect on, on the size of the crosstalk or on the, the looks of the crosstalk. So that's um, definitely an advantage. We have a, a less um, movement dependent or, or position dependent crosstalk. Now, when you look at the, at the probes here, there is a switch on those uh, oscilloscope probes. So this red switch here I can put that uh, to the front um, and then it's, uh, it says uh, uh, times 1 or 1x one or to the back and then it says 10x. So the probes are switchable between uh, 1 times or 10 times attenuation. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to connect the second channel with, uh, with the position uh, uh, 10x to the, to the output of the waveform generator. So the upper channel here uh, is now, if I go back to this, so the upper channel uh, is now with the times one position of the uh, attenuator at the oscilloscope probe and the lower one is at the times 10 attenuation. Now the thing that you see here immediately is that the 10 times actually looks worse because it has more overshoot but the probe has a, an adjustment screw. You should be able to see me moving there towards that uh, uh, screw. And I can turn that screw and I can actually adjust how much the overshoot is. It's basically a, a variable capacitor that um, I'm moving here with the screwdriver. And it changes the ratio between high and low frequencies uh, of, of what the attenuation is in order to adjust it uh, properly. You do that at the low frequency, like one kilohertz or maybe a hundred hertz or so, not at the high frequency. And now you can see that we actually have a perfectly good looking uh, rectangular waveform in the lower display. So what I want to do next is actually switch back to the hundred kilohertz to take a look at what things look like there. Okay, let's uh, switch to just uh, waveforms only and now I'm going to go to the waveform generator and change to 100 kilohertz okay so um, 
if I change here the time base, you should be able to see this. And the, it looks pretty much identical between the two channels. So what I want to do as a next thing, I'll switch back to uh, one kilohertz, is uh, simulate the situation where we don't have a perfect source. Like the, the waveform generator is, is reasonably perfect here from what we have. So I'm back now at one kilohertz and I'm gonna change the time base again. And I'm gonna use now two 10 kilo ohm resistors in series with the output of the uh, waveform generator. Okay, so each of the probes gets their own 10 kilo ohm resistor. And I've switched that over now. And uh, as you can see, you, there is really not much to see truly. Um, it hasn't changed much. But if you go and look now at the rising edge of those uh, waveforms, so we do that by switching back the, the time base, we can see that the lower one, which is the uh, 10 times attenuation, rises much faster than the upper one. So we can actually measure what the time is. So we can go here and uh, go here and over here. So typically the rise time is measured between 10% and 90% of the final value. And we can see that we get about 2.7 uh, microseconds of a rise time here. We can measure that on the other one. So we would go from here roughly to here. Okay, and we can see that we have about 700 nanoseconds here. And you can uh, see that maybe the, there's a factor of somewhere between three and five between the two uh, rise times. And that comes from the fact that the uh, uh, probe is actually loading the output uh, that it measures by the capacitance of the probe. And the capacitance is larger in the times one position than it is in the times 10 position. So as a final thing, what we would like to do is we would like to go back to the 100 kilohertz again and check what the effect of this um, slower or faster rise time is. And uh, here is the result, the upper one. Uh, let's put the label here. Um, so this is the 1x position of the probe and the lower one, that is the 10x position, like that. And we can see, clearly see the difference and we can see that it's desirable to use the 10x probe whenever that is possible. The only disadvantage of the 10x probe, uh, of the probe in the 10x position, is that it now needs more amplification after the probe. And so you might get to see more noise in the signal if you're measuring at uh, low signal levels. Okay, so that's our justification for actually using the BNC adapter and to use the probes and preferably in the times 10 position if we can.